Hi, I am Karen Covell. I'm a producer in Los Angeles, and I also run a nonprofit called the Hollywood Prayer Network. We are here to pray for, encourage, and inspire creative people across the globe who are in the entertainment industry. And today, I get the joy of being able to talk to Catherine Warnock, a producer on the incredible groundbreaking TV series, The Chosen. And I'm very excited because I have such a heart, not only for women who are producers, but Christian women who are producers. It's amazing that we get a chance to be in the marketplace, to share our faith, to do creative projects, and to be leaders. So thank you so much, Catherine, for being here. And I can't wait to talk to you today. We're going to have so much fun. I can't wait to, to dive in. Thank you for having me, Karen. It's such a treat. Oh, absolutely. Well, I know a little bit about you. I know that you are both an American and from UK, that you have a beautiful mix of American and English background, yes. that you are really a four leading producer with marketing and strategy and, and overseeing the big picture on projects. Mm -hmm. Tell me with your experience and with your expertise, how did you end up on The Chosen? Oh my goodness. It's such a fun story and I'll try to keep it brief. Um, I used to head up faith and family content at MGM under Mark Burnett and Roma Downey. And years ago I had, I think I had just had the twins. The twins are, so it was twins are about to be five. Uh, I had just had the twins. This pilot episode called the shepherd comes across my desk. And in this industry, Karen, you know, sad truth is we watch something for five, 10 seconds. We know what we have. And almost entirely, we X out because we simply just don't have the time to watch something if we know right away it doesn't have the goods. So I took note that 60 seconds in, I'm still watching The Shepherd. You know, five minutes in, I'm engrossed. 10 minutes in, I'm tearing up. I watched the whole thing and I'm like properly crying by the end of it. And I was like, what just happened? That's the first time in my entire career. And I've sold like big projects to Sony. I've sold some great stuff to Sony. That was the first time in my entire career that I was like, okay, I, what did I just watch? That this is going to, and I knew it was going to take over the world. I knew it was going to be a global phenomenon. Um, I immediately emailed Mark and Roma and I said, you have to acquire this. They immediately tried, God bless them. But Dallas <laughs> was already in partnership, distribution partnership at the time with Angel Studios. So I was like, oh, we just missed it. We missed a white whale. We missed a global phenomenon. So anyway, skip ahead a few years later, I had just had my third baby um, and my husband says, you have to watch the show. It's actually really good. It's on an app. And I was like, who puts a show on an app? That's so <laughs> cheesy. I was so like, I did not under, like I had no room for new models at the time. <laughs> Finally, he broke me down. I started watching it and about two episodes in, it dawned on me. Oh my goodness. This is the shepherd. This is the same series as the shepherd. And I started researching and I just knew, oh my goodness, here it is. It's becoming a global phenomenon and now officially is. Um, and I just couldn't help but get involved. And um, Brad Pellow, uh, Dallas Jenkins and Daryl Eves made, made, a, made a spot for me and I'm very thankful. Well, that is really a gift. And I'll tell you, I went through the same thing. You know, as producers, we get pretty critical of the type of programming that we want to spend our time watching. Yes. And I had avoided watching this show because I, I thought another you. cheesy Christian television show. Yes. My son comes into the house one day and says to my husband and my and me, you know, my friends are all watching this show called The Chosen. What do you think if we just watch the first episode? And I said, oh, I don't know if you want to. We sat down. Within minutes, the three of us are crying. And we end the episode and we all said, we have to keep watching this. Mm -hmm. So we are avid fans. We've watched every single episode. Every time a season is over, we're waiting for the next season to come up. And now that season three is here, I got the opportunity to see the first two episodes, which completely blew us away. And I am so excited to talk to you about how you feel about this story that is unfolding into this beautiful, not only truth of history, truth of the gospel, but yeah. characters that we're all falling in love with. I mean, you're a professional working on it as a producer, but also personally, tell me about what you feel about the third season. 
So I love that you have seen the first two episodes because they're just transition episodes and they're still that good. Oh, so so as a fan, like, yes, I work on the show, but as a fan, I'm going, oh my goodness. If only you knew Karen, where we're about to go. It is, we're, we're getting raw. We're getting real. And you got some taste of that already. Oh my goodness. Yes. Gloves are off. Um, so I, I think, um, this is going to be the transformative season for the chosen. I think wow. it's profoundly catalytic, um, in particular to push us further outside the, the echo chamber, if you will, uh, of, of, of Christianity in particular, just really, um, it's gonna, it's gonna reach far. It's gonna reach wide and it's gonna go for the heart. And we're not, we're doing real life. We're doing real chat, real chat. Yeah. You have already gone to the heart. So to go more to the heart, I can't even imagine because it's just so touching. And I am I am friends with Jonathan Rumi. He is yeah. an amazing man personally. His gifting as an actor is incredible. His portrayal of Jesus as if we just transported him into our world. And I, I sit back as a friend and as a producer and I say, this man has captured the heart, the love, the joy, the humor, the, the compassion of our, of our God in a way that's so powerful. I just want to let everybody come and see it. And it must be such an honor to work with people like Jonathan on this show and to know that they're here for the long haul. They're not here just to, just to act in a role. They're living out that. Um, tell me about, there's, a, there's been a beautiful article about the actress who plays Mary and how playing this role has touched her heart. Do you have any comment on how this show is impacting the people who are actually working on it? Goodness. Um, so what's really beautiful is the cast is made up of varying different worldviews and faith backgrounds and the crew as well. And that is what is most profoundly stunning to me is to see have each and every one of them go you know, we're hearing the words of Jesus through the mouth of Jonathan. We're engaging with them. We're having that conversation. We're wrestling with it, whether this is our faith background and belief system or not, we're still engaging with it. And we're still seeing the value and how much honor, um, not, it's just a culture of such honor between everybody. And no matter what the faith background is or worldview is, it's, we can all go, Hey, these are pretty awesome words at a minimum and everyone is huddling around that and, and really honoring the beauty of what is happening through the chosen karen we have agnostics we have atheists we have hindus we have buddhists we have even satanists going hey i really love your show <laughs> and i'm like okay that is what it's about and that couldn't happen without a cast that is truly um they take it so seriously. They take not only their craft so seriously, but they understand the impact that this world is having, not just on the Christianity, but the world at large. It's pretty amazing. Well, and, and that's the power of it, because what you're doing is you're portraying the two things we all as human beings crave, relationship and love. And that's what the show is overflowing. And that's who Jesus is. It doesn't matter our background. It doesn't matter what we believe. If we can feel and touch the relationships that we that we experience on earth and the unconditional love of God, it, it's it's a beautiful unifying thing. And to know that it's happening not only to the people watching the show, but the people making the show, well, you can't do any better than that. It's just a beautiful, a beautiful experience. Yeah. One thing that intrigues me, I'd love you to talk about, is the hiring of Jordan Walker Ross, mm -hmm. who is a, an not only a fabulous actor, but a man with a disability that is used so beautifully. I'm not going to give any spoiler alerts for the episode, but I'm telling you the fact that you all reached out and hired a disabled actor to play a disabled role and then to write a scene to lift that up and to show the heart of Jesus. It, it blew me away. It just blew me away. Fun backstory to that is, you know, with Matthew, we intentionally said, okay, Matthew, you know, Dallas and, and the writing team were like, okay, we're going to put him on the spectrum. It's plausible. We'll put him on the spectrum. So that was an intentional storyline built into the character. Now with Jordan for little James, no one knew he had a disability until after he, he kind of was be in the process of being cast, like until he got up and walked out the room, so to speak. And then 
Dallas was just, oh, you know, this is so God, I guess we're going to have to write this in the storyline and we're going to have to wrestle and grapple with, does God heal all people? Um, what, what, how can you be close to Jesus, but still suffering in body? And so um, this season, we take that head on and we have that conversation. Well, and that's what makes it so real to people is that you are dealing with issues that we deal with today. And it's not just an easy thing to say, oh yes, God will change my life. You've got to say, there are parts of my life I don't know answers to. I don't get how this works. Mm -hmm. How do we grapple with it? You mm -hmm. know, it really comes from in Old Testament days, the rabbis would sit at the gates of Jerusalem and ask questions and, and wrestle with life. And I feel like that's what you're doing mm -hmm. for a modern day audience, to be able to ask questions, grapple with tough issues, and not just preach answers, but open it up for people to say, wow, I feel like they understand me even by bringing up the question. Yes. Is that intentional on your writer's part? It is. So it's built into the fabric, the very fabric of the chosen of just, we're adamant. We will never take the place of the church. Our job at the chosen is to invite everyone to the table and introduce them to this authentic Jesus. And we truly believe in the transformative power of Jesus to meet people right where they are and to be enough without the bells, without the whistles, without the preaching, without the, the Bible bashing, so to speak. Um, so it, like our four key principles are we're going to be disruptive. We're going to be playful. We're going to be authentic and we're going to be intimate. That is who we are. And um, that is literally what bolsters every single decision we make, every single thing we do as we listen to God and kind of try to figure out the best way forward. Oh, that's so good. Have you had actual conversations with your producing team about the the intentional and fabulous choice of adding humor? Oh no, that's all. That's all Dallas, Ryan, and Tyler. That's all. That's all the 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 the, the, the amazing production team. They're single handedly just. Dallas is very funny in real life. He's, yeah. he's actually insanely witty, very funny. Ryan and Tyler are equally charming and sincere and have these amazing one-liners. I always am like, okay, who wrote that line? Who wrote that joke? Um, <laughs> always fun to see who of the writing team wrote which joke. And you can just see so much of their personalities into the script. But playfulness is a key part of The Chosen. As a culture, a working culture, as, as part of the executive team, we're laughing all the time. We're telling jokes all the time. We are having so much fun with each other. Um, and that's from the top down. It's a beautiful culture to be a part of. Oh, that's great. Well, talk to me for a second about being a female producer mm -hmm. on a show where all the leads are men, all of the focus is men. How... How was your experience? Well, not all the focus. We've got we've got the women in particular taking a big front seat this season. So Although that's true. And and they have. I mean, it is yes. beautiful how they no, tied it. But to yeah. your point, even more so, which is hugely exciting. No, I'm Karen, you know, we're in a male-dominated industry. And I look at that as a beautiful thing. I I love co-laboring with you know genders co-laboring I, I I don't it, it's not an either or thing ever to me it's a it's a oh we bring such strengths and complement each other's weaknesses so beautifully in that um so I love it I love being able to be the female vote vo you know voice in the room going like I'm sorry you do not know what child labor is like can I get involved in this conversation please Let's get <laughs> um that was just a conversation we had uh yesterday matter of fact um so no, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about it. It's hard when you've got babies at home and you feel God go a role reversal, so to speak, of asking my husband who used to be um, in the DGA, a, direct, a first AD in his own right, and a phenomenal writer in his own right, go, hey, you stay home with the toddlers, raise them while Catherine goes and does this. You know, it's, it's hard. It's my mama heart hurts. Um, but again, when God asks you to do something, especially the privilege of this, you can't help but say yes and say, I surrender. Whatever you ask, Lord, I'll do. Oh, it's so true. And he makes it work. When our kids were little, my husband and I had a saying that we would have to divide and conquer. Yeah. So it, we would say, oh, the baby pass off. Okay, you got them now and now I'll take them. You do. It was always the baby pass off to, and divide and conquer. Those That was the mindset that we had to be in. And with an amazing husband to just come and walk alongside, it's 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 really thrilling to see that work. But I do feel the same as you. It's a privilege when men and women work together. It's 
it's perfect. It, it, it's exactly the balance. Yeah. God must have known what he was doing. I don't know. It's, it seems to be a joy to me. No, what no. are you most looking forward to in this new season? Oh, my goodness. So we're developing some new series. So uh, we're currently in the trenches of development. Um, we're doing, we're going to take the cast all to Israel. It's going to oh. be amazing. We're going to do an amazing documentary series. We're about to roll out another documentary series with Jonathan Rumi, exploring his wrestle with playing and being stopped on the street, being called Jesus all the time while he explores the impact um, and of Jesus around the world throughout history. It's going to be really beautiful. So these are all the projects that are cooking behind the scenes that nobody really knows about. So we are officially expanding the chosen universe. And um, I'm so privileged to be a part of the team that is doing that. Oh, and how many episodes this season? Eight episodes. So we're, we're sticking to our eight, um, which is really amazing. And then, um, yeah, we've got some surprises in store for you this season. Some that will will absolutely break your heart. Um, but we all we always take you tragedy to triumph because that is who Jesus is. He makes beauty from ashes. So it's going to be a, a buckle up. It's going to be quite the season. Well, talk about the phenomena of how you are all raising money through crowdfunding. I mean, this is mm -hmm. this is something that even even people at the Producers Guild that I'm involved with are saying, Deb, you heard about this, how they're doing this? What what is going on with that? Yes. Wow. Tell me about how that started and what's going on and how it's growing. Yeah. So the very initial phase of funding for um season one was crowdfunded. So that was, that was investors. Um, so we have, I think it's over 16,000 investors that, that, that invested into the chosen to see it get off the ground from there. It, um, up until this point, it has been a pay it forward model to where it's not donations. It's not investment. It's, it's truly, um, just a support paying it forward so that others around the world can watch it for free. And only about 5% of our audience has actually paid it forward. That means 95% around the world that could not normally afford it are completely able to watch the show for free because of the, that 5%. Um, and so it's a model that we're constantly expanding and we're exploring new ways to, to really make every dollar stretch and count. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a new model, Karen, with uh, it's very exciting. It's incredible. How does it get specific? How does the pay it forward work? So uh, the pay it forward is you literally pay it forward, whether it's a dollar or whether it's uh, $50,000, for example. And it, it's it's uh, a part of it will go towards uh, expanding awareness of the chosen around the world, getting it into hands of people around the world that normally wouldn't have heard about it. And, and the vast majority uh, will then go firmly, fully into production. And then in terms of our overhead, in terms of, uh, of side projects we're doing, the documentary series, et cetera, um, a lot of that is as, as our merch um, from the gift shop, um, people purchasing chosen gifts um, as just not only becoming a walking billboard for the chosen, but also just um, they make it possible for us to do things like the unfiltered Gen Z reacts to the chosen, which completely to so many is redefining the way the church looks at Gen Z. And that is because of people buying gifts in the gift shop and making sure that the chosen universe is continually being expanded. So that that's a macro overview for you. Wow. And then is this the only show where people are, are watching, I mean, not the only show, but is watching on an app? How, how is the response to people watching it on an app? Has that been working well? It's been working well. I mean, every app is going to have its technical difficulties at times. We have an amazing team that works hard at just um, making it uh, just a better user experience. I think what people what we've been most surprised to see was the impact of removing all walls, like uh, all on ramps. So we don't ask for an email. We don't ask for you to create an account. We don't ask for you to purchase the app. We literally don't ask for anything up front. There's no hurdles. It's literally download the app, you start watching and you can remain completely anonymous if you so choose. Um, and that to me has been, has been vitally important to getting this off the ground. Yes, but you can also watch it on Peacock, correct? Well, you can watch it on Amazon Prime, Peacock. We're rolling out at the end of the month on Netflix around the world in 194 countries around the world and Netflix. Um, yeah, you can watch us. It, it's really, really exciting. Oh, it is. And how many seasons do you have planned? So we have seven seasons 
seven seasons. So we're, you know, we're just now delivering you season three. We'll start season four production end of March as of now. Um, and then the plan is to get you seven. But like I said, we're already working on other series to just keep it coming. Oh, that is so great. Well, in working with your team, what have you found has been a motivator to keep showing up? It's hard work. It's always trying to get enough money to get that series going. I know one of the creative things you've done is inviting your donors to be in the crowd scenes. Yes. What type of creative things have you been doing with the series that way? So yes, I mean, we, we, it, anytime we have a massive scene like Sermon on the Mount, which was, a, you know, 3,000 extras and uh, when we had, like I said, the feeding of the 5,000, over 12,000 extras, that's all, those are all fans that pay their own way. They're creating their own costumes. So much of what we do is community fueled. We, our audience loves to gather. And so we intentionally, like we did with the premiere um, two days ago, it's just going, how do we gather? How do we get, you know, all, all this rabid fan energy and thankfulness into a room and just have community together. Um, that's been a huge part. Another part is Dallas will always say, and I agree with him completely. He goes, it's not our business to know what we're supposed to be doing in five years or even next month. It truly is. That's God's job. And our job is just to follow and bring our loaves and our fish every day. Um, and so we do that every, we take that very seriously. Um, and we also really lock on to the reality of God going, become like children, remain playful, remain free to wonder and just be in awe. And that's something we do a lot at The Chosen as well to kind of keep our keep our sanity because we're moving at warp speed. We're trying to keep up with the momentum of what God has poured out on this show around the world. Um, so please be praying for us as we fight to just stay in his wisdom. To That's something we cry out for every day is his wisdom. And, his well, and you are living it out. Just to let you know, the reputation of people I know working on your show mm -hmm. is that everybody is treated well. Everybody really has a good time. They feel honored to be a part of it. That is not the way we have it work in Hollywood often. Mm -hmm. People are on shows that appear to be perfect and behind the scenes, people are being abused and mistreated and overworked and yelled at. And it's, mm -hmm. it's tough. And yet- on this show, people are living out the stories that you're telling. And I, I just find that to be so remarkable. You know, we have a weekly prayer team for mm -hmm. The Chosen. Every Saturday morning, the Hollywood Prayer Network has an hour once a week to pray just for The Chosen. One of our local chapter directors, we have 160 local chapter directors around the world. For, to pray for people in the global entertainment industry. And one of them, our dear local chapter director in America, Joey, leads a one hour prayer time just for the chosen. And if people wanna find out about how to be on that prayer team, all they have to do is just email us mm -hmm. at info at hpnemail.org and you can be a part of praying for the chosen. Catherine, Dallas, the whole group, all of you, you're being prayed for. And it's such an oh, honor to do that. Thank you. It's so needed. Thank oh. you. That is honestly one of the most refreshing things I've heard in a long time. Thank you very much. I had no idea. Oh my gosh, what an honor. Thank you. Oh, it, well, it's such a joy because you and I know the power of storytelling. Mm -hmm. There is no way we want to hit people over the head with something that is changed our lives and given us so much joy, but to tell a story about it, to let people follow the relationships and the characters, and then to be prayerfully um, loving and supportive of the people who are making that happen. To me, that's heaven on earth. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It's so cute. So what, what prayer requests would you like for you and the chosen? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, I, we're, 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 we're beautifully, as we grow, we're just having to reach new, new places of transition. So if you could just be praying for wisdom as we, as we grow and as we transition, um, and as we fight for the culture that you brought up, just, it, it's a really, it's the most privileged culture I've ever been able to be part of. And we, we treasure it and we are very intentional about it. So just, yeah, be praying that his grace abounds, please. That would be so wonderful. And his wisdom as well. 
Oh, well, I just am so glad to be able to talk to you, to start a new friendship and know that we are here to support you and love you and, yes. and let people know about this show. And I'm, I'm telling you, anybody listening to this, you've got to check out season three. You've got yes. to share it with other people and use art, entertainment, and media as a way to bring God's love to the world. It is the world's most influential marketplace. Mm -hmm. It is a place where when Christians can tell stories that lift up the human spirit, that bring people into a knowledge of the love of God. I mean, I couldn't think of a more perfect job than what you have, Catherine. It's such a gift to, to, to be able to do that and be there and project what you're doing and to do it with such excellence. So thank you so much for everything you're doing, who you, who you are and what you stand for. And we will be fully supporting every episode of season three. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can't wait to tell Jonathan we just chatted. He's going to love it. Oh, give him a hug for me. I love him. An uh, amazing man of God, a really, uh, uh, just a lovely person. He really is. <sighs> Um, thank you so much, Karen, and to your team and just for the continual prayer. I can't tell you what that means to us and how needed it is. We cannot, we're just one little percentage of the pie of what God is trying to do and move through media. Um, and so that's, I'm, it's such an honor to link arms with you. Thank you. Ah, well, there's a great saying that says prayer is not preparation for the greater work. Prayer is the greater work. That's so good. Continue to do that and um, to stay in touch. And thank you so much again. I hope to talk to you again soon. Yes, and I would love that. Yes, thank you so much for being a part of this, hosting Catherine Warnock with The Chosen and looking forward to all that's coming with the new seasons.